Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist here, and in today's video I'm going to talk about what I think is developing in the crypto world, um, as well as where I think markets are headed. Um, I, I can't stand... I've watched a couple of cryptocurrency investors' YouTube channels, and oh man, I usually don't ever watch them, but th what they've been talking about now is so bad, so terrible, and they're all trying to cover up for the fact that they didn't see Bitcoin Cash coming. They're all trying to say Bitcoin Cash was manipulated. Roger Ver is somehow, you know, manipulating entire markets worth, you know, tens of billions of dollars and all this stupid shit, and everyone's coming up with lies and bullshit to cover up their own greed. One thing that I really want you guys all to notice is anytime you watch somebody say something like, you know, Roger Ver is just a greedy asshole trying to get money, this is coming from an investor who's not actually building anything so they're literally gambling with their money and they don't like that you know somebody is doing better at the investing than them Roger Ver all he is is he's one of the best investors as far as cryptocurrencies go um, I'm pretty sure he was the first person to ever invest in a Bitcoin startup the first um, so not the first person to invest in Bitcoin but the first person to invest in Bitcoin startups and I think he started you know getting or getting into the Bitcoin world before exchanges existed, so before there was even a price for them. Um, so all these idiots out here who are just trying to be like, I hate Roger Ver because he made me lose money. Roger Ver didn't make you lose money. Your own stupidity made you lose money. You know, you got to be honest with yourselves. When you lose money, it's your fault. Now, obviously, you know, markets go up and down. Um, myself, personally, it's not like I made a big move into Bitcoin Cash when all this happened. I have actually technically never bought Bitcoin Cash. I just have Bitcoin Cash because I had Bitcoin. Um, you know, so I've never actually bought any Bitcoin Cash. Haven't sold any either. Don't plan on selling any right now, um, just because Bitcoin Cash has a lot of future potential. Um, but anyways, going into this, uh, the first thing I want to show you guys is just some comments from people who are in the industry. So I already showed you guys how. Uh, uh, Gavin Andresen, one of the first guys to actually work with Satoshi Nakamoto on Bitcoin, he already said, uh, you know, Bitcoin Cash is the Bitcoin he worked on with Satoshi Nakamoto. Well, this is Vitalik Buterin, and again, I love Vitalik Buterin. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Ethereum, uh, but what he came out to say on Twitter once Bitcoin Cash got ahead of Ethereum is he said, congratulations to Roger Ver, or, uh, um, Jihan Wu, you know, all these people who are involved in it. Um, and he's serious on this because he sees the value of this, you know. I, you really gotta, if you really want to understand cryptocurrencies, one thing that I've seen a lot of these new male crypto people come out with, and I think I really think this is a war between the new males of crypto and the cypherpunks. Um, the cypherpunks were the first people to get in this. It's like Vitalik, Vitalik Buterin, Roger Ver, um, you know, Gavin Andresen, people like this. People who, uh, and cypherpunk, all that means is people who advocate using strong cryptography and privacy enhancing, enhancing technologies in order to secure your freedom um, and, and use it as a route to social and political change. Like, they literally believe in this stuff to change the world, the way that everything runs. If you actually watch videos of Roger Ver, um, I'll actually come up with a picture on this later. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, this is the next picture here. But this, this next picture, not only, you know, is Vitalik Buterin, you know, one of my favorite guys who says a lot of great things about uh, cryptos, not only is he fa happy for Bitcoin Cash, um, but... Uh, you know, if you look at what Roger Ver, like the reason that he got into Bitcoin is he's trying to stop basically governments from killing everybody. Um, you know, this comment right here, this quote from him, you know, when I realized that Bitcoin has the potential to undermine every government on the entire planet's ability to wage war, I knew I had to get involved and start promoting Bitcoin full time. Um, you'll watch him in other videos where he talks about how disgusting it is that the United States, you know, they put sanctions on Iraq. Uh, and Madeline Albright said, you know, 500,000 kids got killed by those sanctions, 500,000 Iraqi kids who, you know, the kids are innocent. You can't murder 500,000 kids and be like, yeah, that's fine. But Madeline Albright was like, yeah, you know, we made a decision and we're, we're happy with that decision. It's like, what the fuck? Like, these are the people who originally got involved in Bitcoin. And the other thing, like, a lot of these new male new male crypto investors, you gotta realize it's the cypherpunks who are the whales. You're not the whale, so you don't matter. Like, you don't matter at all. Um, it's the cypherpunks who are the whales, so you gotta pay attention to what they say. Next point here that I want to talk about, um, this is just sort of uh, me feeling good about, you know, the background I come from in crypto anarchy and things like that and voluntarism, the non-aggression pr principle, things of that nature. But, you know, Roger Ver, he's got another 
quote here, if you care about liberty, the non-aggression principle, or economic, economic freedom in general, you should do everything you can to use Bitcoin as often as possible in your daily life. Um, and the main reason why he's talking about this is just so if you use Bitcoin, then central banks, like, they have no control over that, and so you completely take away their power. This is another reason why in one of my videos I said you should really be hedging with gold. Um, I try to stay out of the US dollar as much as I can, not only from a profit perspective, but even if gold and you know cryptocurrencies are going down, I try to stay away from uh, fiat because I know that the more money I have in fiat, the more US dollars I hold, the more power I give over these disgusting tyrannical institutions that have enslaved humanity for over a hundred years now. You know, the Federal Reserve has been around for over a hundred years, and you want to know something really disgusting about the Federal Reserve. When it was first started, the people who founded it said, if you still have boom and bust cycles after we're, you know, after this has been established, you know we're a bunch of cranks. Well, we still have boom and bust cycles, so we know they're a bunch of cranks. But uh, going on beyond, you know, the fact that you know you really need to pay attention to these cypherpunks. You really need to pay, pay attention to the people who were in there originally. You know, whether it's Vitalik Buterin, Roger Ver, Gavin Andresen, all these guys who were originally there. A lot of people are trying to say now, oh, this isn't what Bitcoin was meant to be. You know, Bitcoin Cash. You're like, oh, it's going to be centralized with the number of nodes running it. I mean, not really at all. Um, it's it's not really going to be centralized. I mean, Bitcoin Core running Bitcoin Lightning. I've already talked about this. It's way more centralized than Bitcoin Cash because you uh, actually remove the blockchain. So the only people who get to see the transactions or like get to check that the transactions are legitimate is whoever's running the block or the Lightning network. Um, so with Bitcoin Cash, it's just whoever has you know, a, a server that can uh, utilize or that can you know download the entire blockchain as it comes up. So anyone could buy a server. It's just you know it's going to cost some people out of the market. It's going to be cost prohibitive to some people. But let, I mean, if you just read this, this is literally the Satoshi Nakamoto said at first, you know, most users will run network nodes, but after it grows too much, um, more it'll be left to specialists. So he, Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> this is why I can't stand like when people talk about this stuff because they don't even do their research. But the guy who built Bitcoin literally expected it to be like not everyone would run a node. Okay, he expected not everyone would run a node, and then if you go um, later down or farther down, he talks about uh, you know what you would call uh, light clients. Um, actually, that might not be in this one right here, but uh, yeah, he talks. About, I guess he doesn't call them light clients, but he says the rest will be client nodes that only do transactions and don't generate. Um, so that, you know that's this is exactly what he envisioned. Okay, so I can't say when people come in here like, oh, Bitcoin Cash is going to centralize and it's not what Bitcoin was meant to be. Yes, it was. This right here is Satoshi Nakamoto. It's a quote, and it's him talking about doing exactly what Bitcoin Cash is doing. Okay, so I can't say in these new crypto fags who come in here and they're like, I know everything about crypto because I just bought in. It's like, no, you don't. Do your fucking research, you know. Um, and this next one, yeah, um, the one thing that I really don't like about this is how much trash Roger Ver is getting for what he's doing and I guess I you know if you're going to be a successful investor I've said this a lot of times you're going to take hate people are going to hate you you know it's like my videos I get a lot of hate on my videos but how many other crypto YouTubers talked about Bitcoin cash and how much of a, an opportunity it was um, you know I don't think anybody did. They were all trashing it. And then you can go back to like Chainlink, different things like that, where, you know, all these idiots promote the wrong things and they get loved by the community for it. If you're going to win as an investor, you got to be like Roger Ver and be willing to take all the hate from the entire community. You know, he's been called Bitcoin Jesus from the beginning and all the cypherpunks will still call him Bitcoin Jesus because the cypherpunks are probably the ones, you know, switching over to Bitcoin Cash because we actually did our research. We've read Satoshi Nakamoto's work. Not only his white paper, we've read the other things that he's posted. So we know that Bitcoin Cash, you know, we've known for forever that Bitcoin Cash is the way Satoshi Nakamoto envisioned Bitcoin to be. So when people come out and like, this is, they're, they're centralizing Bitcoin. No, they're not, you dumbass. Do your fucking research. It literally takes two fucking minutes. This isn't the white paper, so you could literally look this up in two minutes. Just look up Satoshi Nakamoto's version for, you know, scaling the network. It might take you a little bit more than two minutes to find, but it'll take two minutes to read. Um, the other thing that uh, it sort of irritates me, though, to a larger extent with Roger Veer and the things people are saying about him. People are bringing up a, a charge that he had when he, I think it was back in 2010 or something. Um, he ran in California as a voluntarist for unite for Congress, basically, um, for the California Congress, not, not federal Congress, but the state Congress. 
Um, and so when he did it, he pissed a lot of people off because if you talk about voluntarism in the public space, there, people are going to hate you. And so he pissed a lot of people off with the things he said because he, you know, he didn't say nice things about the United States government. Um, and then he got arrested and put in 10 months in federal prison for owning fireworks uh, and selling fireworks. Now, uh, these these items that he had. Uh, they are actually sold by Cabela's. Um, I can't find the exact item for you. Um, I've got actually a picture of this here. Let me let me go to this picture. But this is actually uh, when uh, Roger Ver. This is his Bitcoin Talk uh, account to memory dealers. Uh, but anyways, this is him talking about it. Uh, I guess he ran for California State Assembly in 2000 and pissed a lot of people off. But um, it looks like 2002 actually is when this uh, crime happened. So this was actually before Bitcoin. This was way before Bitcoin. Um, so he was selling, yeah, this, and it even talks about this. It shows the old link to the Cabela's website. This is a very old post. Um, so the, the link doesn't take you exactly where you, or to the item itself, but... Um, he was selling fireworks that were sold legally by a bunch of other people, which technically speaking means he probably didn't have the, li the right licenses to, uh, you know, be selling it. But if it's like, you know, fireworks, who gives a shit? Um, and all these people are trying to say, oh, he's a crazy felon. It's like, no, he, he sold fireworks. Like, how many people do you know that have bought fireworks? Almost everybody I know has bought fireworks before. Like, illegally, used them illegally. Um, so, is everyone a felon worth throwing in prison forever? Like, they're t saying Roger Ver should be. I mean, I think it's actually Roger Ver, not Roger Ver, but I've been calling him Roger Ver, so I'll keep talking about it. But what does this mean for the markets ahead? Um, I've been talking to you guys about how, you know, Bitcoin bear markets, they're ugly and they last a long time. I think this is the start of it. Um, for me, though, like that's actually Christmas for me. There's a couple reasons why it's Christmas. There's a, if you look at the coin market charts right now, um, the coins that are actually doing well and not getting trashed. Obviously, there's a couple of coins like that I don't know of or understand that are doing quite well. Um, one of them was like, uh, ooh, what is it? I think I got moved. Where bit something. Anyways, uh, I'll find it in just a second. I'm not. H share is going up. There's a lot of weird ones that are going up, like 50%, that I don't know that much about. But the ones that are actually increasing and have been increasing um, consistently while Bitcoin has been crashing, they've all been privacy coins. So Monero has gone up consistently as all these other coins have been crashing. Dash has been going up consistently as all these other coins have been crashing. Now, if you look at the three coins I bought into. Um, the three privacy coins, Zencash, Zcoin, and Pivx, they've all been going slightly down. They're not really down all that much, to be honest. Um, when I talked about Pivx, the price was 3.30. I guess it's a, uh, down at $3 now, so that's a decent drop. But like Zcoin and Zencash are still basically at the same price they were. I'm actually hoping for them to drop. I want them to drop hard <laughs> because, you know, a, a bear market just means a new time to buy, and that's when everybody leaves. Everyone loses faith. Um, so all you're seeing now, and again, this. If you go back to my Bitcoin bubble cycle video, you're seeing the stupid money leave the space. Um, stupid money that thought they knew everything about cryptocurrencies, and they come in here and try and talk like they know what they're talking about, and they're getting crushed. Um, and you, you, you can just tell this by looking at the cryptocurrency YouTubers, that these guys have no idea what they're talking about, these cryptocurrency YouTubers. And it's a lot of new guys, like people who came out, started coming out with videos you know, around the time I did. They probably have less than 200, 300 videos on cryptocurrencies. Um, but they're getting crushed, and none of them saw Bitcoin Cash coming. They don't see it as a long-term play. I see it as a very long-term play. Uh, if Bitcoin Cash, you know, it hits like $5,000, I might start selling some. Um, but it might not even hit $5,000. Like, I, I think this is going to be a bear market for the entire cryptocurrency network. So I think right now you're seeing a lot of people move into Bitcoin Cash to avoid the losses that they're getting in their other cryptocurrencies. But I think you're also going to see Bitcoin Cash start dropping too. Uh, I think you're going to see Bitcoin Cash getting closer and closer to parity with Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin doesn't come out with the Lightning Network soon, or if the Lightning Network comes out and it's not very usable, uh, then I think you are really going to see... Bitcoin Cash uh, 
beat Bitcoin. I really do think that. Now, how long is that going to take? I don't know. What will the price of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash be when that happens? I don't know. But long term, what I'm seeing here is this is probably going to be the start of a bear market. Now, why do I say it's going to be the start of a bear market? Think about this from the perspective of somebody who hasn't ever bought cryptocurrencies. You're looking at this. Bitcoin is doing terrible, and this new fork of Bitcoin is now doing great. And so how would you, like, if you don't understand Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, how would you understand what's going on here? Like I said before, a lot of these people who just got into cryptocurrencies, they don't have a fucking clue. So how do people who have never been in cryptocurrencies, how are they going to understand what's going on? And so it's just going to scare them. They're going to get away from cryptocurrencies. They're not going to invest money in it. So I really think you're going to see uh, a lot of this stuff just dry up. I think you're going to see the entire market cap uh, for all cryptocurrencies start dropping. Uh, maybe you won't. You know, I don't know. Um, personally, I'm a little biased because I want a bear market to happen. I love bear markets. They're like Christmas to me. I love seeing nothing but red on coinmarketcap.com. Um, just because that means I can buy coins at a cheaper value. Um, but, you know, again, that's just my personal opinion. I can't say for sure whether or not that's exactly what's going to happen, but that's what, that's what it all looks like to me. I don't see why new crypto money will come in and, you know, try and buy new cryptocurrencies after what Bitcoin or what just happened with Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Core. Um, and again, if Wall Street money comes in after this, uh, before when, you know, Wall Street didn't like Bitcoin before, they're going to see a serious weakness in it because, you know, Bitcoin Cash is basically stealing its market share. Uh, so I really think, I really, really, really think that what you're going to see is if, like, you know, if institutional money comes in now, they're going to short the shit out of it, you know, and it's just going to be... The final nail in the coffin for this bear market and just I don't I don't always enjoy you know being like I told you so but if you go back to my video it's called will institutional money bury Bitcoin one of the five things that I said that could kill Bitcoin is Bitcoin cash stealing its mining power is that not what happened <laughs> and again I don't know if this is the bear market I've been talking about because if I'm talking like the bear market I'm talking about um, I would I'm I would expect the price of Bitcoin to drop by at least a factor of four. So I would expect the price of Bitcoin to drop to down to at least $2,000, if not more, um, if that was the high, if 8000 was the high. Um, that's what I expect. And again, another reason why I think this is going to happen is so many big crypto YouTubers got this completely wrong. If you look at my subscriber count, I got like, what, 200? Um, if you look at the subscriber count of these retards who literally talked nothing but shit about Bitcoin Cash, and now because they already talked shit about Bitcoin Cash, they're not turning their back on what they said, um, and then, uh, you know, like they're trying to defend what they said, now they're trying to say that Bitcoin Cash was manipulated by Roger Ver, they're, they're spreading all these crazy conspiracy theories, all they're doing is turning away newcomers to the cryptocurrency space. Now again, I don't care that they're doing that, it, obviously it's bad for the crypto space, it's bad for the crypto community, because it makes it look a lot worse than it is. But you don't, like, you make money when things are either overhyped or underhyped. And so all they're doing is they're going to, you know, create a lot of reason for nobody to invest into cryptocurrencies anymore. And so that's perfect for me because I always want to invest in cryptocurrencies. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it... Uh, let you know what my thoughts are on what's going on in this crypto space right now as well as where I think we're headed in the future. Again, you can never know in the present where things are going in the future, so don't like listen to what I said as though it's the word of God. It's not. That's just my personal opinion. Um, if you think I got something wrong or you think something else is uh, coming up in the crypto community, you can uh, leave your comments uh, in the comment section below.